My name is Michelle Taus. I live on Long Island. This is Bayville, New York, which is on the North Shore of Long Island, about 36 miles outside of New York City. I've listened to Grace online for, I think, four years now. Grace Online is perfect for me because I don't live in Erie, so I can't get to Grace. Um, and also, my schedule doesn't always allow me to have a Sunday morning free with three little boys uh, in music and sports. It's a little bit tricky. So Grace Online allows me to listen to church um, whenever I have the time, which is usually driving to and from work or during my workout. I was introduced to Grace by my, my brother and my sister-in-law, apparently known to the Grace community as the Tids. Um, but they're Tom and Sandy to me, and um, about a year after our mother passed away, my brother, actually it was my sister-in-law, invited me to Grace for a Christmas Eve service. Our mom passed away on Christmas Eve, so it was a very painful time, so uh, we all went to church together to Grace, and it was the most powerful, next to the Christmas Eve that we lost my mom, the most powerful Christmas. I think I've ever had. So ever since then, I felt this kind of emptiness that I couldn't get to church. At the time, I was commuting into New York City, which every day for work, which took me about two hours each direction. So sometimes I'd be in the car an hour and a half, sometimes two and a half hours to work, and then another uh, about the same amount of time coming home. So I. Um, I found Grace on my smartphone and I plugged it into the Bluetooth in my car and I listened to every single sermon, every single one. I'm a little behind right now because I had a transition where I wasn't in the car every day. So now I listen in the morning when I run, but Derek's sermons are a little longer than my runs. <laughs> so it takes me a couple loops before I get through the whole ones. Every morning around 5.30 or 6, I get up and I go for my run and I listen to Grace Online. So I usually, usually it's Derek actually on my running days. But the sun comes up over Center Island, which is over here. And it's the purest moment of the day for me. I listen to the sermons and I watch the sun rise and I find probably, it's probably when I'm closest to God actually. A lot of things get worked out in my head at that hour. So what's been most impactful about the sermons for me? Well, it's been everything. I have to be honest, it's actually been everything. Um, oddly, all the years that I've been listening on my way to work, you know, I, I'm a television producer by trade, so um, it's, uh, people think it's really glamorous and exciting because I'm you know, shooting celebrities and whatever. And it's not. It's a job. You say, what's been impactful? My career took off. It sounds crazy, but just using the tools that I learned from the sermons in my everyday life on how I treated people at work, how I dealt with conflict, how I praised others for a good job, how I celebrated those working with me, I always thought I was a good person, but I never really understood the source of it. And when I finally got down to the source of who I am and why it mattered to me to be better to people or consider what would Jesus do in this situation, uh, would he have reacted in anger or frustration or grace and kindness? And I would hear that all the way to work. And then I would get into the office and take a deep breath and say, don't forget what you learned today. It's not easy raising a family of three and living in this area. It's an intense place of the country. It's a very intense location to live in. And um, so just, you know, personally with my husband and I have been through so many struggles in the last 10 years. I think it's normal for most relationships to go through that. But I think the only reason, honestly, the only reason we are still fighting for the marriage and staying together is grace. I. I really have banked on everything I've learned there about why it's important to fight for a marriage and why it's important to remember you're not perfect. <laughs> it's affected all of us, actually. And I don't even know if the kids realize how much because, you know, I've, my little kids are eight and 10 and then I have a 15 year old. So my 15 year old will listen online with me um, when I drive him to the city sometimes, especially if there's something I think is really applicable to a teenager which actually most of it is, but 
Um, you know, he's more in the mindset to hear it. But I think the boys, generally speaking, see a difference in me. You know, just in the way I deal with um, stress and conflict in the house. And at least I hope they have. If it wasn't for Grace online, my life would be definitely different. Um, one of the things that Grace has done for me is help me heal from the loss of my mom. So um, when she passed away, I couldn't breathe. I, it felt like a whole year that I didn't breathe. And, uh, and my brother, Tommy, <laughs> the tids, will say the same thing. It, my mom was very young, she was 64, and she died on Christmas Eve. So Grace Online actually helped us get through the mourning process. And uh, it was a very intense one for us, as I'm sure many people who lose loved ones uh, you start questioning, like, why, you know, why did it happen to me? Why did, why am I left alone? Why is this so painful for me? And what am I supposed to get out of it? Some people, I don't think, ever get to that moment of what am I supposed to learn? And um, they get stuck in the why me? And if you get stuck there, it defines your life. And I think for about a year, I couldn't get out of that. I could not, I couldn't move past it. And Grace, um, Grace helped me move past that. I forgot to ask one day, why me? And I thought to ask, what am I supposed to learn from losing her? And it turned out that it brought me back to Christ, which I didn't know was missing. I didn't realize how separated from God I was. Um, and that was my wake-up call for sure. As sad as I still am over having her, you know, not having her in my life, I'm incredibly grateful for the amazing things that have come after that. So. I don't, I don't cry every day anymore <laughs> about it. I, you know, I do have those, oh, I wish she was here to see the boys show, you know, or I wish she hadn't missed Spencer hit that home run or, but the gift of the love of Christ came from the loss of her. And actually from one person inviting me to church, one person, my sister-in-law Sandy. And I'll, <laughs> I'll never be able to thank her enough for that truly, completely her fault that, that I found Grace. And um, I said that to her once right after she married my brother. And, uh, and I thanked her from the bottom of my heart. And I, I hope she realizes how important it has been for me. God's teaching me a lot of lessons right now. At this stage of my life, boy, at four, what am I, 44? At 44 years old, I feel like I'm starting over. So many things I missed. I missed so much. I thought I was doing such a good job. And uh, I'm learning more lessons from God than I ever knew I needed to learn.